I'm Jackie. And I'm Cassie. And this is Mom, Mom Non Mom, Mom, where we dive into the struggles, questions, and craziness that pregnancy and motherhood can bring. Join us for clarity and hilarity on this journey between a mom and a non-mom. Welcome back to Mom, Non-Mom, and we are excited that you're here for episode three. Woohoo! You came back. Thanks. That's exciting. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> we appreciate the listening. Absolutely. And just in case maybe this is your episode one. We wanted to tell you a little bit about what we are. And kind of how we started and how we got our name and just how we came to be. All the good stuff. So this is Jackie. Uh, yes, I am Jackie, and I have three little kids. I've been a mom for uh, 10 years now, and I've been married for 11 years. Um, yeah, we are just, you know, living life, busy, busy, busy mom life. <laughs> I'm Cassie. I have zero kids, zero marriage, but I do have a dog. She's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, Mrs. I Dottie. love her. She's the best. If you want to hear how much I love her, go back and listen to episode two. <laughs> yeah, is where we talk about, is Dottie her child? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Shout out to all the dog moms, dog parents. <laughs> yes. So we kind of started this podcast as just two friends. So Cassie and I actually, outside of this, work together. And we, you know, talk a lot, and we were just kind of comparing our lives. Right. And we were sitting at lunch one day, and we're like, man, it's like we're in two different realities. But very similar ages. Exactly. And we do have shared experiences. We're in the same spot in life. Right. Just different paths. So, And we noticed that there were a lot of things like uh, that I wasn't familiar with. So early in our relationship when Cassie was single and she would be like online dating, I never had those experiences. I never got the chance to online date. I've been married before Tinder was even a thing. I got married before that it was even invented. And I had to go through all of it. Exactly. <laughs> and then, then there were things, you know, I would talk about my kids and she would have questions. and Yeah, because I know nothing. Right. At all about and- any of that. Yeah, and we figured that there are probably a lot of other people out there like that, maybe that have friends who are moms or have friends who – or are you are a mom and maybe your friends don't have kids yet. So we just kind of wanted to – and it's not really a mom podcast or a parenting podcast. It's going to be about everything. Yeah, about our lives, our experiences, and we just wanted to share it with you guys, whether you're a mom, a married mom, a single mom. A non-mom, a dad, a non-dad, all of the options. All of the options. Yeah, whether you've been married and now you're not, it doesn't, yeah, yeah. it's all, we're just going to be talking about life. Life. We're, we're all <laughs> inclusive here. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome. Yeah, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you. And today we will actually be talking about how to be friends as adults Yeah. with anyone, especially moms. Yeah, just kind of the once you're an adult- how do you make other adult friends? <laughs> Will you be my friend? Will you be my friend? Because, <laughs> like, I don't know how to be friends with adults. Yeah, like, do you just, like, go up and talk to people? Like, what's that? Like, I feel like I'm so much more introverted now than I used to be. And I'm a very extroverted person. Same girl. <laughs> but still, like, just making that initial contact. and Well, first off, let's start with friends that we already have. Right. So when you – well, and then, like, from my perspective is I had I had kids really young. So I, my first child was born and I was 20. So, you know, all of my, none of my friends had kids. So it's kind of hard to keep in contact and your friendship style changes. I've been thinking about this a lot too, because when you think about it, when you're in uh, more like middle school and high school, your priority is your friends. Yes. Yes. So like that is where you want to spend your time. So when I know as a 20-year-old, to then have a family, you you kind of have this expectation to set boundaries with your friends. And I didn't really understand how to do that or why I would want to do that. Because, you know, my friends, that's who I wanted to hang out with. That's that I was, like, substituting 
Because, you know, you're like 19, 20. Like, my mom and dad aren't cool anymore. I don't want right. to hang out with my yeah. mom and dad. I want to be with my friends all the time. So it was kind of hard adjustment. Well, and I think about that all the time because my mom was 19 when she had me. And I have memories of her at my age now. I'm 28. So I was seven. Mm-hmm. And I think about that. I'm like, I am way too selfish right now to be responsible for a child. I want to go do things. I want to go record podcasts. And... I want to go out to the bars when I feel like it. Right. Not just the bars. But. Right. No, but yeah, <laughs> go hang out. Do do whatever you want to when will you ever want to. Exactly. Whenever you want to. You could, you know, you could look at your boyfriend and say, do you want to go to the movies? Yeah, which is... The which movie. we do. Exactly. <laughs> and where I have to, if we want to go to the movies, I have to plan it out. Or if I have to do something with my friends. So I actually have a group of friends that I've been friends with since high school. And we just recently started doing monthly hangouts. And so in order to do the monthly hangouts, we ha- we plan a month in advance. So like at the hangout, we plan for the next month. Oh, nice. So, and we put it on the calendar and it's kind of, um, I mean, there's, a- there's only four of us, so it is kind of not rough. I don't know the right words to say. It's not like, you know what I mean? If someone can't come, it's fine. We'll still hang out, but it is kind of sad when the person is missing. So it's, it's, but it is, we try to be lax and we try to include family days because we all have kids now. Yeah. So. Well, and it's been I, an adjustment. I kind of do that too because I have friends that have kids, and it's really hard to see them. And I have friends that have other friends, and it's also hard to see them because, as an adult, when do you find time for friendships? Like just in general. So I also I do my monthly game night. Right. I'm in a group chat of uh, female friends, and we go out. Like, I usually on birthdays I'm new to this group, which right. thanks guys for letting me join in because <laughs> I love it. It's it's my concert group. Oh. Okay. Like we're like we'll go to concerts together yeah. and like hang out and it's lot it's, it's lots of fun they're great they're great pals, yeah. so but like my best friends like I I don't see them like yeah. unless we schedule time and we make an effort and it's hard because I'm tired right <laughs> I don't even have kids and I'm tired like I just like to get home and put on my pajamas put on Netflix and be done with the day and sometimes you have to. And this is, I know this is, we're kind of talking more about keeping friendships, but sometimes there have been times where I have my monthly group hangs and, um, and <laughs> this will be like spoiler alert for my friends, <laughs> but, uh, like that whole day I'll be like, no, right. <laughs> like I don't want to go, but I go, but I, you know, I know I made the commitment. It's on my calendar. My family already knows it's happening. So, and I go anyway and I've always have fun. Yeah. Every time I'm, I'm there, I'm having fun. But yeah, the leading up to it, I think just pushing yourself and forcing yourself to go out. And it's, I always feel better too yeah. after, I, after I talk to my girls. Well, and I think that's why, like us, we connected at lunch kind of basically. That's how yeah. we stay. Yeah. Talking about our friendship. Yeah. Um, I, adult friendships just in general, like if you, it's easy to make it a friendship when it's convenient not that your friendship yeah, yeah. friendship is convenient <laughs> I mean it is but right. I'm so glad that we did establish that yeah. because otherwise like I'd just be sitting at my desk and eating alone right <laughs> yeah and as an adult it's hard to to step out of your comfort zone yes. and approach someone and be like hey I think you're cool do you want to be friends do you want to be friends yeah right check yes or no check will yes you be no. my friend did you see that girl that went through the drive through and so you know how, like, guys go through the drive-thru and, like, they'll hit on, like, the attendants or whatever? Right. So this girl went through the drive-thru and she was like, I came through here, like, a week ago and you were working and I just wanted to know if you wanted to hang out and, like, do a girl's day and be friends. <laughs> like, will you just be my friend? That was, like, years ago. Yeah. It just popped in my head. Oh, my gosh. I, I wish it was that. still that easy, though. I know. Because <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. And I... Well, and part of my story is my husband was in the military shortly after we got married. So at 20 years old or 21 years old, I we moved like a thousand miles away from everything that I, I like I grew up in our hometown. Yeah. K through 12 was there <laughs> like baby to adult. And then I moved a thousand miles away. So I thank God for the Internet at that time because I did make a lot of friends. Not, not a lot, but I did put myself out there on it just sounds so creepy. I put myself out on the internet to make <laughs> friends. But at that time, like, forums were a big thing. And, like, there were websites where, you know, you just – it was, like, a chat room kind of. And right. And I made uh, friends through that, and I, who I'm still friends with now. Well, and, I mean, they do have, like, Bumble, which is different than Tinder. 
Okay. <laughs> didn't know that. Did, All right. Oh, you didn't know about Bumble? Well, no, I've heard. So I've heard of like Bumble and Tinder and, you know, uh, I've heard of the dating sites, but I don't know the differences between them. Well, so Bumble, um, if I remember correctly, the the girl has to start the conversation first. Like you match okay. and like the girl actually has to initiate it. But what I'm going with is they actually have a separate interface called Bumble BFF. Why? So there's online dating for the friendships? For friendships, yes. Oh. Which I never participated in that <laughs> <laughs> because I could not, even online, I couldn't get out of my comfort zone to like be like, hey, let's let's be cool gal pals. Right. Like, <laughs> woo. No. <laughs> but I do. I have so many different friend groups. And actually, I feel like I, I do a good job at balancing because I almost was spending too much time with my friends and not enough with like family. Oh. So I don't know if you knew this, uh, but New Year's, our New Year's resolution was to, since I at least see friends once a month, we go and have dinner with a different family member once a month. Oh. To at least keep that. Cause yeah, that's really nice. At this age, your family is really, like, those are friendships too, right. honestly. Yeah, well, and so when we moved back here like three years ago after my, after my husband got out of the army, we are now back by my family and yeah. we see them like once a week my family for sure and his he has a very a large family and so we are seeing someone from his family probably once twice three times a week and that's nice to do like the weekly like the dinners if you're if you have that opportunity yeah. and like you said it is a friendship because the relationship that I have with my parents now as a 30 year old versus when you're oh it's completely different 15 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, I actually like my parents now, <laughs> and I appreciate their feedback, and I will go to them for advice instead of being like, whatever, mom and dad, you don't right. know anything. One of my best friends, she goes to her mom for advice about everything, and I admire that so much. Yeah. Like, she's like, I talked to my mom about this, and I'm like, <laughs> you did? What did she say? Can I have your mom's <laughs> advice, please? Tell right. me what you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Can I actually uh, text your mom with advice, things that I need advice with as well? Well, and actually, like, speaking about her and, like, making new friendships. Right. Like, that's how we connected, uh, her and I, because we were in a training class together. Okay. And, like, I just sat next to her, and I was like, hey, uh, do you want do you want to be friends? Do you want to work on this together? Like, high school. Yeah. Like, as a 22-year-old, yeah. I was like, hey, like, you're cool. Let's. Right. But everybody else, like, thought that she was, like, super mean. And I was like, I'm just going to be friends with everybody. <laughs> so then, like, we just kind of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, like, you know, if you're in the workplace and you find a cool colleague, yeah. it's super easy to exactly. connect. If you are, like, a stay-at-home mom, though, that's harder. I would say my thing that I did as a stay-at-home mom was I was involved with groups. Okay. Like, your local library will usually have children's groups that oh. they do like during the day during weekdays so they'll have like a story time or like a craft time so I would always try to go to those and then you'll start to see like once you go so uh, you know if you're going every week you'll see the same moms go every week and then it's just really like kind of like the gym kind of like the gym and yeah. it's just growing the balls to be like hi <laughs> like, <laughs> well so and that so that's a question I have like mm -hmm. I have a friend I, I have, like, six best friends. Yeah. I have six best friends. They're all from different areas of life. <laughs> I, I don't have any – they're all they're all best friends. Right. <laughs> and one of them is um, my dog's – her dog is my dog's best friend. Okay. So that's how we connected. So is that true for kids? Like, you – your kids hang out so you become friends? Yeah. I would say with some people – that is definitely – that's happened to me. You know, my, our kids are friends, so then we become friends. I do feel like more on my end, it's I'm friends with someone, and I'm like, here, be friends with their kid now. Okay. You guys are in okay. re relative age groups. <laughs> Make it work. Um, yeah, I haven't really noticed – well, and as they get older, it gets weird too because yeah. you're not as involved with the kids. So, like – Birthday parties and things where my oldest son will get invited to birthday parties and they're like drop off situations. So I'm just like, okay, bye. Okay, so mm -hmm. like you see it in TV that like the moms are friends because the kids are friends, right? And like I don't remember that from my life at all. Yeah, like, I didn't really. And my experience as well. And again, these are all just opinions. We aren't experts in oh, anything yeah. at all. Just a discussion. <laughs> just, just a, a discussion. discussion. Just two people <laughs> uh, talking about their experiences. 
So my experience was the same as kind of what I I mentioned is that my parents were friends with people. Mm -hmm. So those were the people we hung out with. So you kind of had to like get over it or, you know, make friends with the other people's kids or be miserable every time you hung out. So so as a mom and friendship and all that, so is it easier to be friends with people with kids or without kids? Or is it equal? I would say it is, for me, it's kind of been easier to be friends with people who have kids just because they are they seem to be more understanding when if you go MIA, mm-hmm. if you don't text for a couple days, or, you know, you ghost them for a while, and then you just send a text like, hey, I've just been busy, and, you know, dot, 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 tired, sleeping emoji. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, <laughs> I get it, I get it, I get it. Where I do feel like sometimes, uh, uh, you know, friends who don't have kids may not have that understanding I don't know I I do think as you're getting older though and that that was kind of my experience as I was when I was a younger you know what I mean so mm-hmm. when I was in my early 20s and I had a baby and my friends were still very young and they would you know I don't no one ever came straight out to me and were like you're not texting me back or whatever right. but I I would not text back right away I was distant I was tired I was like you know, I wanted to live in my own little bubble. So I do feel like then they were probably less understanding. But as we're getting older, people, I think just in general, people are like, we're all tired. <laughs> we're all tired. Yeah, we're like, all I'm busy. I'm getting up to go to work, to come home, to go to sleep, to do it again tomorrow. I, I have a friend that we've been friends our whole life. It was one of those, our parents were friends, so we're friends. We grew up together. She's my cousin. So um, she's not really my cousin, but she's my cousin. Oh, one, gotcha. one of those type of friendships. Gotcha. Um, and I, I feel like that. I feel like there's sometimes I'm like, oh, did I do something? Right. But I, I usually like if she doesn't respond within five days, that's my turnaround time. Yeah. But even when we do re-talk, like get back together, I'm, it's, it's like nothing has passed. Nothing. We haven't skipped a beat. And (laughs) I, I think that's the thing is as we've gotten older, it's gotten easier to do that because we have 28 years of friendship under our belt. Exactly. And you're kind of in that same mindset or, you know, as you get older, you can separate yourself that you can notice like, this isn't about me. This is all the other person is tired or is busy or is doing something else. Like you can remove your, yourself from that a little bit. Yeah. And I still invite her to everything that I do. Yeah. I'm game night. I know that 99% (laughs) of the time she's not going to be able to come, but I want her to know that. She's welcome. Right. If she would like to. thinking about her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've, I've got a, my, my list. I go down. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing. If you guys want to join, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but friendships in general. Are hard. They are. <laughs> they take work. Maintaining them, keeping them, which is the same as maintaining. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and being um, conscious of the fact if you haven't spoken to your friend in a while, just... just like, even just sending a text being yeah. like, hey, thinking of you. Thinking of you. Miss your face. Yeah. Love you lots. Love you lots. Let's make a date to get coffee and then do it in a year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just the sentiment. <laughs> just the, Yeah, just thinking about them. Just letting people know that you're thinking about them. And then as far as making friends, I think that is putting yourself out there. Yeah. Even though it's, it's hard and it sucks. And, like, but there are Facebook groups. There are things that you can do. That you can go to like the library meetups and join our Facebook group. Yeah, join our Facebook group. <laughs> we are mom non mom yes. on Facebook, and you can also find us on Instagram. Now we are mom non mom pod on Instagram. All Leave together. a comment to make some friends. Start a yeah. conversation. Start a conversation. How do you keep friendships? What do you? What are your things that you do to help you keep your mem- friendships and maintain your friendships and start friendships yeah Who, when you're super busy yeah when do you hang out with your with your peeps yeah. <laughs> and now we're gonna talk about some newsy news stuff yeah what's going on out there yeah so this time around we have both chosen topics or we've we've chosen one topic and we have different articles to talk about just to start a discussion just things that we saw in the news and uh, things that resonated with us because they bring back a lot of childhood mems. Yeah, so our topic this week is childhood memories slash cartoons. Yeah, two big things came out in the news just recently um, about some cartoon favorites that I know I grew up with. Same, same. 
And we haven't seen the other's article, so Mm-mm. this is brand new to us. Yeah. So I will go ahead and start. And my news article was the article about Arthur's teacher, Mr. Ratburn. Did you ever watch Arthur? I loved Arthur. I loved Arthur so much. Like, I could probably sit here and sing the... Hey. It's a wonderful <laughs> time, time of the day. day. <laughs> Learn to laugh and play. Okay. So I loved Arthur. Grew up with Arthur. And the news story was Mr. Ratburn bow, 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 is gay. And he had... Uh, um, a wedding. Oh. Yeah. And all the kids went to the wedding, and it turned out it was a man. Oh, Yeah. I think that's so cute. Love. Love is love is love is love. Love is love. Yeah. I really like that one, though. And I actually didn't know, so after reading this article, um, first of all, did you know there was a spinoff of Arthur called Postcards from Buster? First off, I didn't know that Arthur was still on the air. I thought it was only around in those memes with the clenched fist. Okay. I, I'm actually a same. Yeah. I didn't know new episodes were being made. That's I thought crazy. they were all reruns. Well, I guess there was there used to be a spinoff uh, called Postcards from Buster. And there was one back in 2005 where they pulled the episode because in the episode, Buster went and visited a family in Vermont with um, two moms. Oh. And yeah. The former education secretary under George W. Bush, Miss Margaret Spellings herself, requested PBS to pull the episode huh. because they, she didn't think children should be exposed you to know, that kind of stuff, and they did. When was that? That was in 2005. And I really liked, so the creator of Arthur, Mark Brown, he actually had a statement on about it. He was really disappointed that they pulled that um, episode, and he said, I liked his quote because it was... Um, they, they really just – the whole point of the show was to connect kids to other kids, and the Vermont episode especially was connecting kids and validating children who are seldom validated. So I know, Aww. right? And then when you think about it that way, you're like, why didn't they pull that episode? There are kids out there with two moms. There are kids out there with two dads. Right, yeah. And back in 2005 especially, yeah, it was not seen very often. I feel like our generation growing up is just so much more – accustomed to being comfortable with that yeah and I the world we live in is a little rough but I love the world that we're getting into agreed I agree and I yeah I have such a soft spot in my heart for LGBTQ um people and just you know the whole I just think like we said earlier love is love is love and I like that they represented that. And I guess in the episode, because I didn't watch it clearly. Yeah. Um, they never came out and said, they never said the words, Mr. Rapper and his gay. Yeah. Or anything like that. It was, um, he was, the person that he was getting married to was dressed like every other man in the in the show. And he gave a little wink to the kids oh. when Mr. Rapper went down the aisle. It's just normalizing so, it. Yeah, I agree. I, I love it. I'm here for it. Way to go, PBS. Way, Way to go. go, Arthur. Way to go, Mark Brown. Way to go. We're here for you. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> You're doing great. Um, my article is also about getting kids comfortable with different life situations. Um, Sesame Street, which I was never super into as a kid. I was kind of scared of Big Bird. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was always scared of his friend Snuffy. Like, Oh, the, the whatever monster, that was. Yeah. He's yeah. like an elephant, yeah. but not really – he scared me because I knew he was, like, supposed to be, like, fluffy. But I'm like, what are you? Oh. <laughs> it, was, it just was kind of scary. <laughs> well, it's a wonderful show. Um, has lots of educational value. Been going on for years. They just introduced a new character named Carly. Okay. Uh, she is a foster kid and has oh. foster parents. Hmm. Um, I, in reading this article, uh, was very astounded to know that Elmo has a dad that's a character now. Didn't know that. <laughs> right? It's been a while since I've watched Sesame Street as same, well. Same, same. And it's just, it's crazy how these shows evolve. Um, but he's had a dad since 2006. His name is Louie. Just so you know. Okie jokey. Elmo and Louie. <laughs> Elmo and Louie. Um, so apparently there's a scene um, where Louie asks Carly's foster parents how it's going. And... Uh, They respond that, you know, changes are tough for kids and adults, but they're excited to get this opportunity. And then they all go have pizza. 
But it's part of this series uh, that PBS or not PBS Sesame Street Sesame Street is Whatever. launching. Okay. Uh, f- for care resources, so they have a whole series. Uh, they have topics uh, about homelessness, parents that are incarcerated, uh, foster care, substance abuse. Wow. They've been doing this since 2013. Wow. So it's pretty deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds really deep, but it sounds really yeah good. It, it is, and they have uh, storybooks that the kids can go through yeah. uh, that are interactive, uh, printables, um, just to help with the traumatic experiences. That's really awesome. And I know when – uh, when my husband deployed, when he was in the army, our son was like two. Our oldest son was like two or three. And Sesame Street actually had a whole military. I and I I'm, it wasn't like on Sesame Street, mm-hmm. but the military provided videos oh. of Elmo and other Sesame Street characters meeting um, a girl whose dad had deployed, and they like helped her yeah. through that. Yeah. So I kind of knew that they had that. Thing going all along, but I think this is awesome that they're actually putting it on their show. Yeah, and it's it's crazy. So to get deep for a second, because this is what this article makes me think of. Right. Um, I lost my dad when I was younger. Okay. And we went through this uh, program called Caterpillar Kids, mm-hmm. and going through that, things like this, it, it really does help. Yeah. And um, it's very. I, I was very. I just kept reading and reading and reading. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. Just to, you know, again, normalize what you're going through because you don't understand when you're a kid. Part of it was talking about having big emotions. Yeah. You have all those emotions and yeah, it's hard I to. I can't even imagine. Yeah, figure out what to do with them. Right. I can't imagine what those kids are going through, like the foster kids and the homeless kids. I can't imagine what you went through as a child. All of it. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to like bomb you with that. No, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, well, I was like just reflecting on my response and I said, okay. Like, <laughs> Because I don't know how to handle big emotions. This so. is, well, they have Sesame Street videos. <laughs> Maybe I do need to watch some Sesame Street because I'm here. I get real bad news and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> this is a happy show. Okay. Sorry. No, I think you're we're validating yes. what your experience and what you went through. Just like the, that's what yes. these shows are meant to do. Yeah. Because, I mean, stuff happens. and Yeah, and there's so much to deal with. And I – so list, learning about your article and reading this one mm-hmm. – um, I will tell you that I've had this kind of like nostalgic view yeah. of when I have kids, like these shows that are on nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. I'm, every time I, I see one or I hear about one, I'm like, this isn't what I remember. This is not Mr. Rogers right. and Big Comfy Couch <laughs> or Gala Gala Island. Yeah. These aren't teaching the values that I think – because. I feel like I should get them all on VHS and convert them to Blu-ray. Right. And so this makes me feel better that the world is also progressing. Agreed. I agree with that. I think also, yeah, but we could. T- I could sit here and talk about kids' TV all day, though, because I, my kids watch TV. Yeah. And it's just such a different experience than what I watch TV. Like, all we do is stream. Like, we don't have cable. We don't have regular TV. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny to see them when we, like, when we went on our trip – over oh, spring break. Your trip. Yeah, our trip. <laughs> Call when, back. I know. <laughs> when we went on our trip on spring break, uh, we had regular, quote unquote, regular TV. It was cable. Oh, cable. And they were like, where's the show? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but like, no, these are commercials. And the kids are like not understanding. They didn't know what commercials were? I They... No. <laughs> they, didn't want to wait. They, didn't, they didn't want to wait for their show. And they were like, I want to watch this. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not on right now. So you have to watch what's on right now. And they're like, no, no, no. I, I want to watch this. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not how this works. So, okay. That that just astounds me. I Well, I guess I'm the same way. I pay for Hulu without commercials. But then sometimes I'll switch to regular cable, like on a vacation. Right. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I kind of miss these commercials. There's so much in the world I don't know about because right, yeah. I skip it all. Exactly. It's all, it's all targeted at me, so I don't see what everybody else gets advertised for. That's true. I guess I never thought about that, that all those ads are targeted. I also am with you, like, when you're just, like, surfing. I, Although I guess on Netflix and things you do that as well. To, but I always have my fallbacks. 
on Netflix. Oh, yeah. So if I can't, if I'm, t- you know, I'll search through, like, two things. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just going to go back to watching Parks and Rec <laughs> again for right? the 50 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so this was how we're going to start doing our new segment. Yeah. Uh, for future news articles, we would love for you to submit a request of what you'd love us to look into. Yeah, if you have any topics that are interesting to you or if you find any, like, weird news stories that n- not necessarily have to do with parenting – it can be anything, anything weird out there. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll both find an article. and Yeah, give us a topic. Let us know what you want to hear about, and we'll talk about it. And also, we'd love to hear your thoughts on kids' TV. How it changes, how kids, you know, how different it is now, how kids watch TV differently than when we did when we were kids. What you think about the articles that we just talked about. Exactly. Your, what are your thoughts on old Mr. Ratburn and his, and you know that article that I read didn't even say his husband's name. So Really? Mr. Ratburn and his husband. And or his husband. Sesame maybe Street. he's married to Louie. Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, no. Arthur and Elmo are stepbrothers <laughs> now. Oh, no. I feel bad for Arthur. He already had a deal with DW. Oh. Well, <laughs> I mean... Can't win them all. I know. And <laughs> speaking of um, younger siblings and babies, we're going to move on to our game. Cassie, Ooh, are you ready? I'm ready for redemption. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so our game. Ding. Yeah, I was going to say, I couldn't remember if you won our last game or not, but. You creamed me last okay. time. Okay. <laughs> all right. I apologize. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay, this next game. Okay. Is a good one. Yes, it is. <laughs> We are doing, so we're going to do a callback to celebrity baby names. Here's what we have. We have the celebrity baby name. I will be asking Cassie, or I will be telling Cassie the name of the baby. And I'll give her three celebrities of which it may be. And she's going to do the same for me. Give me a baby name. Tell me three celebrities it may be. And then you got to guess. May Who? the odds be ever in your favor. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, go first. Give me your first name, girl. All right. Dusty Rose, does that baby belong to Adam Levine, Axl Rose, or Carlos Santana? Oh, no. It's a good one. That is a good one, because I automatically want to say Axl Rose, but then I'm like, would he name the baby after himself? Maybe. Perhaps. Hmm. I'm going to go with (laughs) Carlos Santana. No. Oh. It is Adam Levine. Oh, my God. You know what? I really thought Adam Levine, but then I'm like, he doesn't have kids. Right? (laughs) I didn't know he had children. He really is a dill. (laughs) No joke. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I I have the next one. Are you ready? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) This one is Sparrow. Sparrow. Is this Nicole Richie's baby, Jason Bateman's baby, or Ashley Simpson's baby? Oh, boy. I'm going to say Ashley Simpson. It is actually uh, Nicole Richie's. Uh, I knew it wasn't Jason Bateman. Yeah. I love Jason Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, was a good one. It's all right. So zero to zero. Zero to zero. No okay. one's winning yet. Next one. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? I am ready. Axel. <laughs> Again? Again. No. <laughs> Axel Jack. Axel Jack? Axel Jack. Car parts. Yes. <laughs> Does that baby belong to Sarah Michelle Geller slash or Fergie? Oh my goodness. Axel Jack. Um ooh, 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 ooh. is it Fergie's baby? It is Fergie's baby. <gasps> oh, Fergalicious definition. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one for Jackie. Yay. Okay, here's the next one. All right. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for this one. Am I ready for this jelly? You're not. Okay. <laughs> Whose baby is Buddy Bear? Buddy Bear? Buddy Bear. Buddy Bear. Okay. okay. Is this Paula Dean's baby? Is this <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's baby? Or is it Jamie Oliver's baby? I want to say Gordon Ramsay. Is that your final answer? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> It's Jamie Oliver's baby. I don't even know who Jamie Oliver oh, is. See, I, would, I, I didn't know because prior to recording this, I asked her if she watched Food Network, and she said no. I wondered why you asked me that. <laughs> Jamie Oliver is a famous chef. He okay. actually had a show. It wasn't just on Food Network. It was on, I want to say ABC or one of the major networks, where he was uh, switching out the lunches here in America. 
oh, look it up. It like was good. school lunches? Yeah, school lunches. Because he realized the school lunches here in America were garbage. They are. And he wanted to help fix Aww. them. I know. He's a really sweet. He, actually, I want to say he started his career with a book, or maybe it was TV, but he was called The Naked Chef. Well, he can so. name his baby Buddy Bear. Buddy then. Bear. Buddy Bear and Jane There you Oliver. go. There you go. <laughs> buddy Bear. Little Buddy Bear. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> All right. Uh, Harper 7. Harper 7? Harper 7. A number in the name. Okay. Is it the baby of Simon Cowell, Mel B, or Victoria and David Beckham? Oh. I kind of know Victoria and David Beckham have. Because Harper's like a nor, like a. Yeah. Like I've heard yeah. that name before. Seven is the weird part. Right. Is it her pal Mel B, though, from Spice Girls? Mm. It's a tough decision. It is a tough decision. I'm going to go with Mel B. Is that your final answer? Uh, I, I think that means no, but I'm going to stick with it. It is Victoria <sighs> and David Beckham. Dang it. That's all right. It's all, all right. right. So right. got one up on me. <laughs> all right. This one's for all the. All the marbles? All the marbles. Okay. Whose baby is Zuma? Zuma? Zuma. Okay. Is it Jamie Lynn Spears, Madonna, or Gwen Stefani? I'm going to say Gwen Stefani. Oh, you are so right. Yeah. I knew that one. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We're tied. Okay. So this is the tiebreaker. Okay. Can you get this? Maybe. Let's see. Okay. Maybe, maybe. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. (laughs) Elsie Otter. Elsie Otter. That sounds like a character in one of the TV shows. PB and J. I almost put that as one of the choices. Because I was like, oh, nostalgia. Yeah. Kid shows. Okay. Elsie Otter. Zoe De Chanel. Katy Perry. Or Fiona Apple. Ooh. Okay, so I know Katy Perry doesn't have any kids, so. I was betting you didn't know I, that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's either Fiona Apple or Zoe De Chanel. I know Zoe De Chanel has a child. I don't know much about Fiona Apple. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Good is it chance? Elsie Otter. Is it Fiona Apple's child? Are you sure? Well, no, not now. <laughs> I just maybe I'm trying to trick you. <laughs> maybe you are. I'm gonna. I mean, stand firm. I'm making a decision. I'm making the stand. That baby belongs to Zoe De Chanel. Oh. So this round is a tie. Well, look at that. Yes. <laughs> I'll give it to you since you got the first point. Oh, okay. I'll concede. All right. <laughs> if you guys think of any fun games for us to play, try to stump each other. Let me win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pick an easy one for Cassie. <laughs> yeah. Something that I can do. Uh, <laughs> put it on our Facebook again. I feel like we're advertising that a lot, but I just, we want you guys to be with us. Absolutely. I just, yeah, I just want to hear what you guys are thinking, what you're feeling, if you're you know, what things you guys want to hear, because clearly you're the ones listening. I could sit here and talk about anything. All day. All day, every day. All day, or day. (laughs) This is our third episode. You guys are invested now. Exactly. You're here for the long haul. And we love having you. Absolutely. So. (laughs) Whether you're a mom. Or a non-mom. You're doing a great job. You got this. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you next time.